and welcome to Grace. My name is Ndiwu, and I'm your host for this evening. To everyone that's joining us on the online committee, welcome to you as well. Please feel free to drop a message to Vanya. He'll be your host for this evening. To everyone that's here tonight, um, I'd like to invite you just to take a stand, stretch a little bit, and the worship team is going to lead us as we enter into God's presence. So our first song is about the love of God. Oh yeah while I talk to you. So um, I was reading this morning about how Paul prayed that the church would understand and experience the love of God. And so tonight as we sing our first song, it describes how God thinks about you and me and how He feels about you, how He feels about me. It describes it so beautifully. So let's enter into that love of God tonight as we sing. But I want to read to you from 1 John 4 verse 11 because this love can't stay here. It's got to move through us. It's got to go to other people. So listen to what John wrote to the believers. He said, Dear friends, since God loved us so much or that much, we surely ought to love each other. It's like he's going, it's just a given. It's 101. It's like a no-brainer. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, if we love each other, God lives in us and His love is brought to full expression in us. So come on, let's open wide our hearts to receive and then let it flow to others. Let's go. Your love is strong and
Only your love can make us whom you've called us and created us to be. Only your love can bind us together. Only your love can bring us back to life, Lord. And so we really do want to open our hearts and let you talk to us tonight about what it means to let that love flow to others. Amen. We're heaven spun creations, His pride and adoration, treasures woven by His love. It's who we are, yeah. His careful hands, they hold us safe within His promise of calling. I will sing of all you've done And I'll remember how far you carried me From beginning until the end You are faithful, faithful to
nangapambili wabegi sanga sa kopezu kwa wena wetuwa ungi zunge zile ngase muva nangapambili wabegi sanga sa kopezu kwa you tonight and we say there is none like you we give you all the praise 
you are all the God Almighty you are mighty to save and father God we thank you that you just take us as we are you are the God that will never judge us you don't judge us according to our mistakes but you love us Lord and you treat us with compassion and we give you praise tonight for you remain God in our lives and we will forever praise you in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen How amazing was that? Can we give the band another round of applause? Please feel free to take your seats. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm Dibu, and uh, I'm your host for this evening. It's so good to see that uh, there's so many people here tonight. Um, so the next little segment is going to be um, an intro to the, the volunteer um, video that we have. So on June 16th, we went to the street store. I was actually part of that, and it was really great. Um, but one of the things that uh, a lot of people kind of ask me, if I could just like digress for a little bit, is why I sometimes call myself Leia and sometimes I call myself Ndibu. So I've got three names, I won't take you through all three, um, but those two you can basically play around with. And uh, one of the things I do here at Grace is I volunteer, um, among other places. So the street store um, basically is a place where we just kind of lavish love on people who generally are disregarded. Um, they would walk into this building and walk out pretty much unregarded. And it's our time basically that we set aside to go and love on people that you see in the streets that you probably handed a bit of change over to. Um, but as you prepare to just view this video, um, I was going through a couple of quotes on volunteering, right? Um, I had to look for jokes because it's a Sunday. Um, but basically, the few that I found were like really dry, so I won't share those with you. Um, but one that I found that really appealed to me as an African was an African proverb that says, if you feel you're too insignificant to make a contribution and you make no difference in the world, you have clearly never spent the night with a mosquito. That awesome. Lots of mosquitoes. Is that what you? I don't know what you're getting at there. I'm so inspired by that video, and well done. Well done to you, Grace Family Church, for loving our city in such a beautiful and profound way. Uh, it's just, it's one of the most um, exceptional things that we do as a community, and so well done to everyone involved. I think we, they deserve uh, all around of applause again. That was just awesome. Um, as we prepare in this next moment as part of our service to give, um, I know many of you do give online um, in a monthly sort of EFT. We know that some of you give now during the service, and you can go ahead and prepare for that if you do give during the service. But as I was uh, watching this video, I, I remembered um, I haven't uh, been quick enough to sign up for the street store over the last, uh, the last year or so. Um, and so just a heads up, if you want to be a part of the street store, sign up early because that thing fills up quick. Um, but the first year we did it, I, I got an opportunity to serve and I was a shopping assistant. It's the first time I've ever done that in my whole life and, uh, and I'll never do it again. Um, not the serving at street store, but being a shopping assistant. You can ask my wife, I'm really bad at it. Um, but, but as I was there, I was walking through with this uh, young little guy, probably about seven or eight years old, 
and we walked past the, the shoes, and, uh, and he was with his little mates, and they, and they saw soccer boots, and the one was Nike, and the one was Adidas, and, and I, they weren't new, they were all, fairly old, I mean, they had, they had a few scuffs on them, and I just saw these little guys absolutely light up because they had an opportunity for the first time in their lives to get their dream soccer boots. The one got Adidas and the one got Nike. And as I was thinking about that, I think the person that probably gave those gave their, their, their other pair. I mean, they gave away a pair of boots because they had a pair of boots. That's likely why they gave it away. And, so, and sometimes we think that the thing that we're bringing is insignificant. It doesn't have a part to play in the broader story. And so we just often just sort of like give it and don't really know, but, but where it lands, the people that it meets, has, the impact of that is so significant. And it's like our giving in so many ways. We get to moments like this and we think, well, what is it going to make a difference? Some little kid gets to sit and have their life transformed because of a little sacrifice that one person, make, that one person made. Your giving in moments like this change our world. Don't think that your part is insignificant like a mosquito. It changes our world. So let's pray as we give together. God, we acknowledge that you are the source of all that we have. We're so grateful that we get to play a part in your mission to heal the world. And so now as we give, we just acknowledge that, uh, yeah, we're grateful. We're grateful to contribute to what you're doing in the world around us. And so thank you that this work is not just about us, but all around us. Uh, Jesus, we pray these things in your name. Amen. Hey, I'm going to invite you to take a look at the screens and see what's coming up next here at Grace. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Lee, and welcome to Grace Family Church. There are some exciting events coming up at Grace, so let's take a look at what's happening and where you can get involved. Mandela Day is around the corner, so why not join us for your 67 minutes of giving back? Come along to Graysom Schlange, where we'll have a number of activities you and your colleagues can be a part of, benefiting a number of NGO partners. The Live Band will be playing live music, there will be food and coffee on sale, and bring your camera along for a team photo at the Mandela Photo Wall. This is open to all, so sign up online and come along on the 18th of July. Here at Grace, we believe that group life is a place to belong. Group life is doing life together. It's connecting with friends and family. It's meeting your colleagues before work to encourage each other. And it's about growing in faith. We have a number of groups you can be a part of at Grace. And on the 25th of July, we're having a group link event where you can sign up for the group that suits you best. So save the date now and come along to your campus on the 25th for group link. Hi everyone, my name is Sia. I'm the youth pastor at Grace Family Church. This is Luto from Olive Tree Church. Olive Tree Church and Grace Family Church have decided to partner together and host a youth camp from the 10th to the 12th of August. It's at a cool place called Teen Ranch on the Lower South Coast. We're really excited about getting teenagers from around the city to come and worship God together. If you want more information, you can email me at luto at otc.org.za. Or you can email me at sia at grace. See, See you, you there. You can find all this info in your brochure. Otherwise, visit our website, Grace app, or social media pages if you need a reminder. It's so great to have you with us today. Enjoy the rest of the service. Good evening again from me. I was a little bit rude earlier and I didn't introduce myself if we haven't met before. My name is Paul. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace. Again, just to welcome those of you who join us online. Uh, as uh, as Ndavio said earlier, Vanya is your online host. He's a genuine legend and so I'd encourage you uh, to connect with him. I'm going to start tonight uh, by doing uh, something that as uh, communicators and preachers were told you should never ever do. I'm, I'm breaking the golden rule of preaching straight away and so you're in for a fairly good night um, if I could say that. The, the thing that we're told never to do is to make assumptions about our audience. So, so we, we should never make assumptions about who you are, where you are and what's going on. Now that's quite challenging in, in many ways but I'm going to do that and that's, I'm breaking the golden rule. I'm assuming that if you're here tonight 
you're here and you fit into one of three-ish categories. Now, again, I'm not trying to label you, and please don't feel offended in any way, um, those of you that are millennials in here. But my guess is I, I, there's, there's three groups of people here tonight, right? Uh, the first one is, is you're here tonight, and you're exploring this idea of God. Maybe you're here tonight, and you're, you're trying to figure out if this God thing is true and real, or maybe you're here tonight and you're on a journey. You're on a journey of trying to understand who God is, and so this is a part of what you do to help you in that journey. That may be you. The second group of people that may be here tonight, uh, you're here, and, and one of the reasons you've chosen to come here, one of the reasons you're in this space is because you're looking for connection. You're looking for some sense of belonging and community, a place you can call home, and you're figuring out if that is this place or you know it is and you're sitting with your people right now. So that may be you as well. The third group of people who may be here is, is you're here tonight and you're trying to figure out this whole purpose thing. Is there more to my life than this? Is there meaning in what I'm doing? You're asking the existential questions of the world around us, and you're here trying to figure out if you have a purpose. You may also just be here and you're dragged here and welcome. It's so good to have you here as well. But my guess is you're in one of those three spaces. And, and this series that we begin tonight uh, called A Place to Belong, we hope that over the next, uh, this week and, and the next two weeks after, that we will be able to engage in those questions and, and not only engage in those questions, but see how when we find a place to belong, the answer to those questions are so often discovered, found, and expressed. And we want to explore that over the next three weeks. Um, but tonight, I'm going to begin by speaking about dancing. Now, what we're going to do together is I'm going to invite you to stand in just a moment, and we're going to uh, do like a little dance-off. Um, is, anyone, is anyone keen? Can I see some? No, no one. Okay. And let me just tell you, that is the, I saw one. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Do you want to come up and do a little like, I don't know. Um, I just need to express how bad I am at dancing. And so it's not about dancing, dancing, because um, I am not the expert in that uh, in any way, shape or form. Uh, Pips, that's accurate. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate it. I want to speak about uh, uh, the dance, about dance. And uh, I'll just, what, before I get into that, I just want to say this, that what I'm about to uh, share now, uh, this thought that I'm about to share, um, I am not going to do it justice. I just want to be very clear. The thing that I'm about to share with you, I'm not going to do it justice. And in some ways, I don't intend to. I, I intend to provoke some thoughts, uh, potentially for those of you who are exploring, and try and reframe something a little bit for those of you who've been around for a while. And this thing that I'm going to explore in just a moment, Mark um, shared this morning with our morning congregation. He'll be here next week, and he unpacks it in some of the most life-transforming ways. I really would encourage you to, to be back here next week. But, but let's speak about the dance. Now, now, understanding who God is is an incredibly complex thing. Um, God is uh, never changing, and yet in the Bible we see some stuff that doesn't make, doesn't make sense. We know that God was in the beginning and will be at the end, so where did he begin where does he end? These are the complexities of the mystery of who God is. But I think one of the things in my conversations with people in the world around me that comes up as a confusion, something that people don't quite understand, is that when we speak about God, we speak about three in one. We say that God is Father, Son, and Spirit. So, so let me illustrate that for you a little bit. Uh, we say that God is uh, Father. We say that He is uh, Son, and, and Son is Jesus. Can you see that? That's, that is an S, not a five. Um, and we say that, that God is Holy Spirit. So we're, we're saying that we believe in one God, but that one God is three. How does that work? And that's a mystery. It's a profound, beautiful mystery. And part of mystery is that it's inexplicable, and yet it's something that makes sense to us. Uh, it's something that we're able to hold on, and it gives us strength. So, so we understand that, that there is one God, um, but there are these three elements of God. Now, now, how does that work? What does that look like? What does it mean to you and I? Well, the first thing that we need to understand is that in this relationship, in this the sense of community, there is... There is mutual deference, the Father to the Son, the Son to the Holy Spirit, Spirit to the Father, and all to each other. That, that God is constantly in the space of, of not being first amongst himself. God in his very nature is, is serving. God in his very nature is, is submitting one to another. There is this consistent mutual deference. 
And because of that mutual deference, the relationship between Father, Son, and Spirit is a relationship that is built on, I hope I can write this accurately, love. That, that, that the consistent interaction between Father, Son, and Spirit, that consistent movement is often referred to as the dance. The dance of God, the interaction of God with in himself itself is a constant movement of love. This mutual deference exists because God in his very nature is love and the interaction between God results in love. Love one to another. Again, I'm not doing this justice, but I want to set this up in some way. Now, here's the beautiful thing. This relationship, if I drew a perfect circle, you should be worried. It's perfect. Perfect. There is no flaw in this relationship. There is beautiful mutual deference and love expressed, and the expression of that love is perfect because God is love and God is perfect. And that exists in this beautiful space at all times. The, the, the theological word and the understanding of this dance, this reality that God is both the one that is dancing and the very dance itself. God is the one that is dancing and the very dance itself. This idea is called perichoresis. The dance, the, the movement and reflection of God. And I understand that, again, I'm not doing this justice, but, but I want to set up the reality that our God exists in this perfect perichoresis. Now, here's the profoundly amazing, radical, transforming thing. You and I, because of what Jesus does for us on the cross, we get invited into the dance. As imperfect people who don't necessarily love God, when we, when we respond to the call of Jesus on our lives, when we say yes to faith, to what Jesus has done, we step into the very heart and relationship of God. That's what we say here at Grace. We say that the goal of our faith is not private perfection. It's not about being good enough because we'll never be good enough to enter into that space. The goal of our faith is to live in the reality of the dance that we exist in. The way we say that here at Grace is, is the goal of our faith is not private perfection, but union with God. The goal of our faith is not about being publicly perfect, but it's about living out the reality of that scandalous grace. A grace that says me as imperfect, because of who Jesus is, gets invited into a perfect dance. This relationship that exists. This is profound and beautiful, but, but not only do we get invited into that relationship, and that is the foundation of our faith, and again, Mark's going to unpack that in much more detail next week. Not only do we get invited into the dance, but, but in every moment of every day, you and I get, get invited to participate in the, the dance itself. Uh, Gilbert Bilzerian uh, says it like this, community is deeply grounded in the nature of God, that is perichoresis. It flows from who God is. I want to pause there for a moment. That is a profoundly mystical and beautiful thought. Community is deeply grounded in who God, in the nature of God. It flows from who God is. It goes on to say this. Because God is community, because he is community, he creates community. Because God exists in community, he creates community. It is his gift of himself to humans. Therefore, the making of community is not to be regarded as an optional decision for us as Christians. It is a compelling and irrevocable necessity, a binding divine mandate for all believers at all times. Community is God's gift of himself to us. What you sit in right now is an expression of who God is, us together, messy people together. This community that exists here at the Mklanga PM campus, this is a gift of God himself to us that we get to participate in. But, but what do I mean when I, when I say the word community? Because that is like a, a, a jargon sort of word that often is used in church and is often misrepresented and, and maybe it's not so clear in your mind. Well, well, simply, the idea of community is others. I know that's profound in every single way, but it's simple. Others, 
other people who, who are, yes, around us in the world at large, but, but the community that's being spoken of here is people who are willing to journey with you on, on, on this journey of, of wherever you find yourself in this exploration of your union with God. People who, who, are, who are not willing to simply accept the answer of I'm fine to the question of how are you. That's community. Community is this idea that, that we have a place to belong. Where we're known, where we're cared for, when, where we're included. That is community. Now, now what I'm not speaking about here is the form of community. I'm not speaking about a specific this is what it looks like because community is diverse and beautifully so, and we'll get into a little bit of that later. What I'm speaking about here is the function of community. The function of community. This place of being, that's fine. Oh, okay. Am I back? Yes. Awesome. It was probably the best part of the sermon. Um, <laughs> me being quiet, not what I said. Um, God, God's heart for us is, is not a, a form that we need to fit into, but a function that he desires for us. And that is his gift of himself to us. M maybe to say it like this. When I speak about community and this gift that God is giving to us, community is, is, is when we're connected relationally. Community, this, this idea of community exists when we're connected relationally. These are spaces of belonging, of being connected relationally. These spaces are a gift from God, of God to us. And, and I really believe this. They're an important answer to the questions that we may have around God, connectedness, and purpose. That those are answered in the context so often of community. So, so why is that? Why is community a gift of God to us? Why is it that it is the space we are able to explore these answers? Why is community this expression of who God is to the world around us? Well, I, I want to just briefly explore five reasons why I think that is. Five, five thoughts with you that, that, that summarize why I think community is a gift from God to us. When we're connected relationally, the first one is this. We express our love for God. Christine shared it earlier in, 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 uh, in worship, this idea, and we've spoken a lot about this at Grace over the last while, and so I'm not going to get into this point in too much detail, but, but, but the reality is that throughout Scripture, and in particular the New Testament, post-Jesus' life, we see that the, the call of Scripture is that we can only truly express our love for God when it's reflected in the world around us, in the way that we love others. It's, it can't just be, I love God, that's all good, and I carry on with my day. It, it's got to lead to a place where we love others. And in fact, not only does it lead to a place where we love others, in some ways it's, it, it's what expresses that. Uh, John 13, uh, 34 on says this. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. This is Jesus speaking. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another... Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. If you, want, if you want a compelling reason to love the world around you, this is how the world will, will, uh, will know that we are Jesus' disciples. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Again, this isn't about private perfection, and we don't reach that place of loving people through being perfectly private, pr private perfectly, whichever that way that goes. It's because we're in love that we're able to love. It's because we receive love, because we're in a relationship with a God who is love, that we're able to love. That doesn't come out of own human effort. It's a gift, it's a gift. And maybe it's a prayer that you can pray, God, help me to love, help me to love. The second thing that, that I see, when, when we're connected relationally, it challenges us to grow in our faith. The, the writer of the book of Hebrews was compelling his audience when he penned these words in Hebrews 10. He says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the, uh, to, uh, to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promises. I just want to quickly say, there may be someone here tonight that needs to hear those words. God can be trusted to keep his promises. Let us think of ways to motivate one another towards acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together. This is both corporate and close. This is about many and, and few, together as some people do. But encourage one another. 
Being correct, connected relationally is the thing that helps us work out the place we find ourselves in in perfect relationship through our imperfection. I am not perfect now, and yet Jesus sees me as perfect. Community is the place that allows me to work out what God sees in me that isn't yet existing. It is that space. The, the best example I have of this was a group that I was a, a, group that I was a part of in, in Joburg when I was studying there. And we called ourselves Sinbin. And uh, the reason we called ourselves Sinbin is because we was a group of young guys. And often we needed to receive red cards um, and be sent to the Sinbin because of our behavior. Um, and that just meant that we were usually frivolous and stupid and, and all that kind of stuff. But this group of, of guys, we, we gathered together because we wanted to grow in our faith. And so we, we would gather together sort of on, on, on a Tuesday night, I think it was, and, and we'd, we'd arrive and then we'd watch some blitz, some super sport blitz, and then we'd make some tea and then we'd worship and then we'd sort of chirp each other's moms and then um, someone would like share a scripture. And, but all the time, there was this sense of we didn't neglect meeting together and, and we encouraged one another towards love and good works towards understanding that, that we were made perfect and yet we're not perfect, but we're working towards that place. If I'm honest with you, the times I have grown most in my spiritual journey have been in the context of community. I, I wanna say this, sometimes around this kind of thing, circles are better than rows. It's in a circle that you're able to be held accountable because there's a few people calling you to something more. Community, when we're connected relationally, it challenges us to grow. When we're connected relationally, it's preventative. It's preventative. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, Ecclesiastes is a book of, uh, in, the, in the wisdom literature of the Bible. And, uh, and the writer, uh, not fully known, uh, we don't fully know. Some people think it was Solomon. Some people think it was others. Some people think it was someone copying Solomon. Um, but, but the writer uh, speaks as a teacher. And his exploration of things that, that the world are trying to find meaning and purpose in, and, and yet he calls them haval. They are whispers and vapor, but nothing. So often we try to find meaning and purpose in things that are but vapor. And, and his reflections are, are, there's something important about being connected relationally. So, so this passage of, of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 4, um, is actually titled The Advantage of Companionship. And this is how it goes. I'm going to read a little bit, and then the, the words are going to come up on the screen. So it says this, I observe yet another example of something meaningless, that word haval, under the sun. This is the case of a man who is alone, without a child or a brother, yet who works hard to gain as much wealth as he can. But, when, but then he asks himself, who am I working for? Why am I giving up so much pleasure? Why am I giving up so much for pleasure now? It's all meaningless and depressing. This is in the Bible, super cheerful guy. Now, I want to quickly pause here and, and just a side thought. I, I think sometimes we, we move into the dangerous mindset of thinking that the only significant relationship that we're meant to have in our world is that with our spouse. Now, I want to just say that again. Sometimes we move into this mindset that we see marriage as the only place significant and meaningful relationships are meant to exist. And they, marriage, the marriage picture is a beautiful thing. But what this writer is saying here, and what we're about to read now in this next portion, is not an, ex an express um, call uh, for, for marriage and for, for your spouse. It's actually a call for a broader relationship with others. What, I, what it's not is, is you meant to have one spouse. That's not an encouragement to do other things here. But, but it is a call to say that so often, I think, in today's world, man, and we see this just in every single movie and in so many songs, the only relationship we're meant to have is with Bay. Like, there's a bigger call on our lives than just that relationship. And, and the, the, the next passage is about that. It says these words, two people are better off than one. For they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other person can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. It goes on a little bit later. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. I want to say this to you. And I really believe this because I've experienced this. People who experience heartbreak within the context 
of, of safe and authentic community may have hearts that are broken, but they are never broken by the circumstances they face. People who, who experience heartbreak within the safe space of authentic community may have hearts that are broken, but they are never broken by the circumstances they face. Pips and I have experienced that in our lives. Uh, just a few months into our, our marriage, I was actually overseas at the time. Pips' dad had a, a heart attack and uh, ended up in ICU for a number of months and, and later passed away. This was our first year of marriage. It was lots of fun. But, but let me tell you, our hearts were broken, as you can well imagine. But, but really, I mean this as, as authentically as I can, I think we would have been broken people not just, had, not just had hearts that were broken if we didn't have a community of people around us who were there to love us, care for us, pray for us, support us, bring meals to us, come to the hospital and just sit with us. Community, when we're connected relationally, it is preventative. And, and here, the beautiful encouragement for us is when we find authentic community, and I'm not just talking about a group, I'm talking about a people. We're able to face the difficult circumstances of our life and not be broken by them. The, the, the next thing that, that, I, that I believe of community is, is community, when we're, when we're connected relationally, it allows us to express our gifts. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 says this, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Yes, us together as Grace Family Church, but us as the church at large. Some of us are, uh, some of us are, are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are white, some are Indian, some are black, some are Chinese. Like, there's diversity here, and some are free. But, but, all, have been, but all who have been baptized into, uh, into, uh, who have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we share that same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one. You, uh, you're a part of the body of Christ. You sitting here are part of the body of Christ. And, and the call of this passage and the, 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 the words that surround it is, is a call to actively participate in being a part of the body. The, the call of us being, being many but one is a call for, for active participation in the mission of God, not just passive observance. And I want to maybe challenge you in your thoughts about where you land on this. Because, because we are many. And, and can I just say this? When you're not actively participating in the mission of God, we are missing out on something. We're missing out on you not being involved in what's going on in the broader church community. God has gifted you in incredibly profound and beautiful ways. You may not think that about yourself. You may not believe that about yourself. But you are a part of the body of Christ. And every single one of us, the passage goes on to say, whether it's seen or not seen, get some gory details there, but every single part of the body has, an, has a part to play. And I really believe this, that when we are connected relationally, we, we grow in, in, our, in our sense of our gifts. And we're able to express our gifts and they bless other people. Being connected relationally allows us to express the gifts that we have. And the last thing that I want to say on this is that being connected relationally is the sign our world needs. Being connected relationally is the sign our world needs. Jesus prays this for us. It's recorded in the book of John in chapter 17. I'm praying not only for these disciples, those gathered in front of him, but also for all those who will, who will ever believe in me through their message. That's you and I. I pray that they will all be one. Just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you have gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I am I in them and they are in me. May they experience, this is my prayer for us and it's Jesus' prayer for us, may they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Back to that picture. Being connected relationally is the sign our world needs that Jesus loves them and that Jesus was sent for them. I love the way Francis Schaeffer expresses these, these thoughts. He says, our relationships with each other is the criterion the world uses to judge whether our message is truthful. Isn't that so true? Christian community, Christian community is the final apologetic. 
It's the only thing the world really does need to see in our modern expression to help them believe in who Jesus was. So what does that mean to you? To you sitting here tonight, to being connected relationally as all of these things, what does it mean to you? And I'd love you to walk away with one thought tonight. If you're going to walk away with one idea in your mind, walk away with this. When we are connected relationally, we grow spiritually. When we're connected relationally, we grow spiritually. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like moving away from isolation into a space where you're connected with others. It's a conscious decision to say, I'm not going to go at this journey alone. Now, it looks different. Again, it looks different for every single one of us. But it's a decision to say, I'm going to step towards spaces where I can find a place to belong. I'm going to step towards places where I can find a place to belong. Here at Grace, we call that group life. One of the spaces that that you're being invited into that we get to participate in, where we get to find a place to belong, is group life. And, And it is about finding a place to belong because we know this. When you find a place to belong, you will grow. When you find a place to belong, you will grow. Now, and again, I want to dispel some fears. We're not talking about a particular form of community, that it needs to look a particular way and fit into a particular box, that you have to meet on a Wednesday night from, from 7 until 9 with this many people in this home. Some of you have come from, from spaces where that is what the call is. We believe that community is diverse, and we want you to find a space that's gathered around your interests, your stage of life, the areas that you live, and just simply gather with the intentional belief that when we're connected relationally, we're going to grow spiritually. That's what we want you to find, a space to belong. Some of us think that, that, that stepping into these, these environments requires some sort of like exorbitant sacrifice. Um, and, and it, you know, it's going to require giving up a whole lot of comfort and maybe even moving into the center of town. And uh, there are these ideas, these, these fears that I need to conform to a particular notion of that thing. I really believe that when we find a place to belong, it's about doing life with people. My small group, my life group, sitting over there, some of them. It's just about doing life together, celebrating. And we got a message on our WhatsApp group. One of our, 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 the girls in our, our small group was just asking for us to pray for it. This, this wasn't in a particular moment. It's just about doing life together. All of us in different space, spaces and stages, it's about doing life together. Maybe just to help you uh, understand what that looks like, I'd love to share Sam and Carl's story with you. So why don't you just turn to the screens now? Carl and I, we, we love to think of ourselves as, as still young. So we still put ourselves in the youth bucket or young adults rather, let me be safe and say that. We're young and we, we're a young married couple. We really wanted to be in the company of young families yeah. and um, that were doing life, uh, starting new lives together. So we didn't know much about a small group. But we, we felt that, you know, we can open up our home and, and just learn along the way. Over the longer period of time since we've had our small group, we haven't had a, a lot of people, but we've had, um, in particular, one couple, which we've grown really, really close to. Mm. We could really call them family. They, they are family. And we've, we've just seen together as, as, you know, as a group how we've grown and how they have grown individually. I think we were just created to be in union with one another. Hmm. There's just no ways you can survive in this world uh, uh, doing life all by yourself. And for me, that's important. What we are aiming to do, we want to not only keep that life group morale or values within the life group, but also to go and practice that, whether it's in a community, uh, in the community in which we meet, or it's, it's tackling a particular need within society. Where we situated in Morningside, we sort of on a, on a main road, and we usually just see the, the ills, the ills of, of society, they're like right in front of our gate. And we just, as a small group, people meeting, people that can influence our communities, people that can be the change in our communities. And especially now that our small group um, is growing, we just feel like God is just placing such a 
uh, a unique thing in, in all of us in terms of this missional heart. It's an opportunity for them to, to build their character. Um, it's an opportunity for them to deal with their hurts and pains because you, you have confidence that you, you're in a safe place and you, you're talking to people who are, who, are, who are looking for you know, a better life. If you think about your fears and your anxiety around um, running a, a small group, I would just ask God to, to help you with that and just go for it. Um, I think those fears and anxiety are the thieves of what you could actually become and what a, a community that you can build around you can, can look like. So there's a saying in Isizulu that says, Umuntu ngumuntu ngabantu which speaks directly to you can't live life alone. You can't do life in your little isolated corner. You are only a complete human being when there's other human beings supporting you, uh, around you, building you up, and you doing the same. So, and, and that's what small group is all about. Umuntu, umuntu ngavantu. Yeah. Amen. I mean, I just want to say this. Uh, I'd love to say that we set that, that up. The way that that ties into what we're saying, but that's their hearts, and they lead just an amazing community of people. The night that we were there, they literally were serving the people on their streets. It's just an amazing group of people. So we love Sam and Carl. Uh, where does this land for you? I have two simple applications, two simple things. I, again, in the context of, the, of what I would love you to walk home with, when we're connected relationally, we grow spiritually. So the first thing I'd love to invite you to do is to love people. I know that's profound. I know that's, you were waiting for like a big, love people. And again, we can't love people because we are good at, like we're good at loving people. Man, that's got to come from God. But, but I think our world is desperate for a community of people who will love people. What does that look like? I think it looks like leaning in. Leaning towards others, not away. Not towards isolation, but, but lean into the people in the world around you. The colleagues, the friends, the, the fellow students, the, the people sitting in your row here at church. Lean into people. Lean into the world around you. I think the other thing is be kind. That, that's what it means to love people. You know, a great example, and Mark gave this to me uh, when we were chatting about this message. He said, you know, you can go to a restaurant and you can be really upset with the food, and I'm, and I'm only challenged by this because, man, this is challenging me. I can be really upset by the, the quality of the meal, but I can still be kind. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but when you experience that on the other end, it is transformational. When someone is able to, to phone you from a, from a call center and you're able to be kind to them, I promise you that impact is significant. I promise you that impact. Can we commit ourselves just to be kind? It's so, so powerful, and, and here's an even bigger challenge. And this is, this is revolutionary. You're going to walk away tonight going, I'm so grateful I went to church. Eye contact. With the teller, with the petrol attendant, with the person at the toll gate, with the person you're sitting with, with your loved ones, with your kids. Man, it is transformational. We, we met a lady the other day who came to our church and uh, she was really hurt and hurt by church and hurt by a whole bunch. And she walked out of this building really a little bit upset and disillusioned. And Mark was standing at the door and looked at her in the eyes and smiled. And she said it changed how she viewed who God was. Guys, let's be kind. Let's lean in. Let's make eye contact. Let's love people. Again, we can't do that out of our own human efforts. It's got to be driven by God. And here's the other one. This is the other application. It's love people. And what I would love for you to do, and what my heart is for you to do, is to join a group here at Grace. To join a group, a place to belong. Again, there isn't a particular, there isn't a particular form that we're asking you to step into. That we've got diverse groups that, that range in, in life stage and area and interest. But on the 25th of July, we're going to have an event called Group Link. It's where you can come and actually meet other people and form a group around your, your life stage, your interest, and your area. And we would love for you to find a place to belong because we know this. When we're connected relationally, we grow spiritually. Can I ask you to stand and I just want to close the service by praying for us um, as we head out. Um, I, want to, I want to pray this verse over you if that's okay. It's found in Ephesians 3. 
And, uh, and I just felt like at the end of tonight, it, it was a fair amount of application and, um, and you know, what, what being connected relationally looks like. And, and again, I, I would love for us to love people and to, and to find a place to belong. But I, I wanted to end with this prayer. It's my prayer for me. It's my prayer for you. But I think that when we, we get a hold of this stuff, we're able to go out into the world and to be connected relationally with those around you. So this is my prayer for us from uh, Ephesians 4, and it'll be up on the screens. When I think of all of this, when I think of who God is, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have, this is my prayer for us, and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. It is who God is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Where we find ourselves, this isn't about private perfection. Now, all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us, within you. He's able to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in this church and in that church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have an amazing week. We'll see you next week.